Hello, and thank you for viewing this video, in which I'll be talking about month 2 of the Warhammer 40k Legends Collection. My name is Steve, this is the SDFnet 40k channel, and let us begin. I will start off by noting that this month's issue appears to have been sent a little late. When I queried this with Hatchet's customer services, I was advised that my copies of the books should be dispatched on the 7th of October 2016, due to stock issues. However, I received my delivery on the 22nd of October, so this is a little later than would be nice. We already know that demand for this product has been huge, so perhaps they're still having teething problems getting stock produced and shipped in time? At the end of the day, I got my books and the free gifts, so I shouldn't really complain. This month we received 15 hours and Warriors of Ultramar, which are volumes 49 and 10 in the series. This does vindicate my concern I voiced about my first delivery, that the books will arrive out of series order. I speculated if the randomised order was just for the first shipment, but it seems to apply this month, which means you're not going to see the spine image grow and develop over time. It's just going to be an erratic mess until it's nearly finished and near completion. Let's start with issue 3, Warriors of Ultramar, written by Graham McNeil who is one of the names I definitely recognise from 40k fiction. I haven't read this title before, as I do not much care for Smurfs, but I have faith that I will enjoy this book. The, the synopsis reads, In the cold darkness of space, the tyrannies travel from world to world, consuming all in a futile attempt to shake their hunger for biomatter. Lying directly in this path is the industrial planet Tarsis Ultra, where Captain Ur Uriel Ventress of the Ultramarines stand shoulder to shoulder with brother space marines from the Mortificators chapter. Uriel must accept the barbaric traditions of his allies and act against the ancient tactics laid down in the holy Codex Astartes in order to destroy the alien menace. Nids munching on some smurfs? Sounds hilarious to me. And Uriel Ventress is a name I recognise, so it will be interesting to learn more about the character behind the name. The book is 371 pages long and flicking through, the print quality seems fine, as was the last two issues. I would note that there is a number of empty pages at the back of the book. We saw this in previous issues as well. I don't know the reason for this. Perhaps someone, uh, someone out there in interwebs land could let me know. I'm speculating it might be something to do with the printing process. I don't see why they would bother putting blank pages in pointlessly just to bulk out the book. If nothing else, reducing the page count to only what would be needed would save resources and costs, meaning it must be some byproducts of manufacturing process? That's my thought at least. Let me know if you know. The centre of the book features the extra colour images section and the lore, and we have a timeline here, some nice artwork, short introductions to the Tyranid race. However, I would say if you're going to commit £800 on a book collection, you probably pass the introduction stage. Uh, the cover of the book features an ultramarine, who I assume is Ventress, either about to slice a Tyranid with his power sword, or perhaps dancing? Mid-pirouette or something? I don't know. It's hard to tell. And given the Emperor has decreed that the ultramarines are to face and beat the Harlequins in a dance-off, perhaps he's getting some praxis? To anyone who doesn't get that reference, I refer you to the creator of all things canon, lore-wise, on YouTube, Brother Afubasa. The silver printed heresy header on the cover also tells us that this is a Warhammer 40k novel, i.e. not a Horus Heresy novel. Now let's move on to issue 4, entitled 15 Hours, by Michael Scanlon, which is volume 49 in the Legends Collection. Now this is notably shorter compared to the Warriors of Ultramar, with a page count of only 202 pages, with 15 blank pages at the back. I do not know the story, so again, a book I'm looking forward to reading, and the length of a story and a book is not representative of the quality or engagement. The synopsis of the book reads, The stalwart troops of the Imperial Guard are first line of defence against the numerous foes of the Imperium. Their heroism and courage is renowned across the galaxy, and their armoured might has crushed countless rebellions and invasions. This action-packed novel tells the story of a lone guardsman and his baptism by fire in a combat zone where the average ex life expectancy is a mere 15 hours. 
fighting hand to hand with the barbarous orcs, he must draw upon all his training if he is to live and see another dawn. The horrors of war are only too real in this harrowing tale of carnage and valour. So yeah, sounds cool. I enjoy guard stories, despite not actually having actually read Gaunt's. Yes, yes, I know, I'm terrible. If the Gaunt books appear in the series, I will read them. How's about that? I do not. I do recall one short story about a guardsman trainee. I think the Death Corpse of Krieg, who discovered a gene stealer cult infestation on the training world, and uh, he had to kind of deal with that. Yeah, I enjoyed the story; it stuck with me, even if I can't remember what it's called. This novel, like Warriors of Ultramar, is taken from the general 40k fluff, as denotes by front cover. The cover art is, I assume, our protagonist about to bayonet an orc, a totally guardsman response for which I have absolute respect, but I don't fancy his chances. The centre of the book has the colour section which contains uh, more timeline info, an introduction to the orc race, and some really nice pictures, some that I've seen before, others that I don't recognise, so they might be new. Either way, there are some nice graphics and the print quality is top notch. Moving on from the books to the free gifts that came with these issues, we have some chaos icon bookends and some coasters. I'll first look at the coasters as I thought from the website they weren't going to be much, but they surprised me with how much I like them. There are six, each with a different design. They are metal with a cork underside. I would note that the cork bottom is shallower than the lip of the metal rim, meaning they could easily slide on the table, which they may not have done if the cork was the full depth of the coaster. As with my complaint about the books not having page mark ribbons, had they just uh, either put full depth cork or perhaps a felt bottom on that, it would have been felt a lot nicer and a higher quality. They were so close to a premium product by having them printed on metal rather than, as I expected, laminated card or something. But the small shortfall hurts the feel of the overall products. That's just my opinion, of course. When it comes to everything else, this is a gift, so I'm very, very happy. The print quality is great, and they have a dramatic, grim, dark aesthetic that I would not be ashamed to have out on the coffee table at home. They could have been quite gaudy, but they seem, to me, quite classy. As for the prints, I couldn't tell you if these are sections from larger artworks or bespoke creations. I assume the latter. They're nice, however. We have Abaddon, uh, I assume a space wolf with a lightning claw, Araman, a howling griffin, I think, maybe, uh, an imperial guard commissar, who might be Gaunt or Yarrick, I don't know, might be, and finally a sister of battle. In summary, I am really happy with these items. I might try and add some felt or something to the bottom of them to prevent them sliding, but otherwise, it's all good. The second gift was one that I was anticipating, and I am now pleased with. That is the Chaos Icon bookends. There isn't really too much to say about these, given that they are just a folded sheet of steel with a pattern stamped out, but they're nice. They are sprayed silver, and the stamping out of the pattern appears not to have left any rough edges that could cut you or damage your books. They are made from 1mm steel, and the base is definitely deep enough that they could stand upright on their own, or probably go, say, under one and a half worth of books, so I'd imagine they would ad be adequately sturdy for at least books the height of these novels. I'm not sure about, for example, White Dwarfs, but I will let you know once I've got en enough issues to fill the gaps between the two bookends. In summary, despite the potentially late delivery compared to what I was told to expect, and uh, despite my ongoing niggling concerns about how the items fall just short of premium quality, I am extremely happy with this month's delivery, and continue to be happy with my subscription. As always, I'm not paid to say this, I have no affiliation to Hatchet Part Works. Uh, I just found people with products talking about them helps me to make purchasing decisions. So my review is hopefully here to help you judge for yourselves where you think this product is right for you. Well, that's me done for now. I appreciate your taking time, the time to listen and ramble on. I hope you enjoyed the content and welcome constructive feedback and discussion in the comments below. If you like this video, hit like. If you like my content, hit subscribe. 
both help me in knowing what's working. I have been Steve, this has been the SDFNet 40k channel, and I will see you next time. The Emperor Protects.